Today is the feast day of St. Martha. The Gospel today is the familiar passage when Jesus visits the sisters Martha and Mary. Martha complains to Jesus that she is having to do all the household work, while Mary is sitting outside listening to Jesus doing nothing. This passage is all too familiar to me in my household, and I'm sure anyone who has kids. Mommy, Felicity is not helping me with the dishes, or Daddy, Caleb's not cleaning up the toys. It's not fair that I have to do all the work. Of course, Jesus doesn't make matters any better. He commits the cardinal sin of parenting, or in this case, parent figuring, by picking up, picking sides between kids. I can only imagine the ways Mary rubbed it in Martha's face later on that Jesus took her side in the argument. How many of us over the past five months of being quarantined with our families have had fights like this with our siblings? If my kids are any barometer of a typical household, then probably too many to count. Or if you are a college student or a young professional, how often have you found yourself annoyed with your parents or they with you? As I've been talking to students over the summer, the beginning of school can't come soon enough. And the prospect of not returning to campus for some is unbearable given the mounting tensions at home. Martha and Mary's little spat seems all too real and relevant in these days of pandemic. But let's not leave it at that. What can this passage teach us about these relationships at home? I've been thinking about that and two thoughts came to me. First, do we find ourselves relating to our parents and our siblings the same way we did when we were growing up? Reverting back to the same roles of tattletaling and asking mom and dad to referee our relationships, even as adults? Have we become so annoyed and anxious about how our parents treat us that we've lost the ability to truly listen to them anymore? This was maybe one of the reasons Jesus challenged Martha, that she was so distracted by many things that she wasn't capable of listening and learning. A second thought. Maybe there's something to learn from the boundaries that Jesus is breaking in this story by praising Mary, who's sitting at the feet of Jesus, her rabbi, something that was only reserved for men at the time. It challenges me and, and us to think about what boundaries can we be challenging in our relationships with our parents and our siblings? Can we start to relate to them as adults, expressing our boundaries in healthy and loving ways? Or being mindful of our parents' own boundaries? Are we choosing to be vulnerable with our family, expressing our feelings and emotions in the same way that Martha did with Jesus in a previous passage when her brother Lazarus died. I'm guessing that we typically approach how we live with our parents much differently than, say, our roommates at school. At school, we establish certain rules, and, and we recognize that the way we are used to living may not be the same as our roommates at school or in dorm rooms. And so there are compromises and negotiations made to live in harmony with each other as best as possible. As adults in our parents' homes, maybe those same compromises and negotiations need to happen as well. Or need to be renegotiated from what the expectations were when we were children or adolescents. We might be expected to help out a lot more now, to pitch in with dinners or laundry, or to engage relationally in ways that as a child maybe we weren't expected to. Martha probably learned a lot that day from Jesus in an unexpected way about how the dynamic between her and her sister may have been dysfunctional at times. And how she may have been treating Jesus as a referee was also dysfunctional. But Jesus calmly addresses that with her. And so maybe we too are called to look at the dysfunctions in our own familial relationships and see how we contribute to those dysfunctions 
and and how we can assert ourselves in loving ways to our parents and siblings about what our needs and our expectations are. It's possible by looking at our familial relationships and the dysfunctions that exist in those relationships that we may get a window into this, the dysfunctions we carry into our friendships and our roommate relationships back at school, even if the same tensions don't exist in those relationships. I suspect by doing that work, it will make us a better roommate, a better friend, a better brother or sister, a better son or daughter. 